Recently, I did a video talking about how to improve Dragon Ball GT and what I think would have made Dragon Ball GT a better series. And at the end of that video, I did say I was going to go back and talk about Dragon Ball Super and how to improve Dragon Ball Super. Now, the good thing is that with GT, it's over. You can't really improve something that is already finished. But with Dragon Ball Super, the story is far from over and thus there's still room for improvement. So on this video, I'm going to give you seven things that I think Dragon Ball Super can do to be a better series. Now before I start the actual countdown I want to say that these are in no particular order and I want to say that this is not me hating Dragon Ball Super or anything negative like that. You should know by now if you follow my content that I do enjoy watching Super on most weeks but there are problems with the series and unless you're a blind fanboy you know of these problems so even if you agree or disagree with my list it's okay remember it's just my own opinion and my own seven things that I would improve about the series and if you have your own list I would love to read that down below in the comments I want you to tell me what you think would improve Dragon Ball Super so let's get to it now Hey guys, if you want to hear my deconstructions and breakdowns of other things that I love like movies, TV, wrestling, and life, then be sure to check out my brand new channel, World of Geekdom. I will leave a link down below. Now, before I begin the list of the seven things I would improve about Dragon Ball Super, one for each Dragon Ball, I want to make sure that we have this clear, that this is going to be strictly from a writing perspective. I will not be discussing the animation or the sound effects or anything like that, just the actual storytelling of the series. And also, I want to say that these seven points are not going to be from a fanboy perspective. So you're not going to hear me say that Gohan needs more screen time or Vegeta or any of that because it would just take up too much time and everyone has their own favorite character. No, I'm going to look at this from an unbiased perspective, from a critical perspective of seven things that I think Super can work on to be a better series. So the one we're going to start with, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. And remember, these are in no particular order, but I do feel like this first one is the least important one as of right now. And that is the bad idea of them doing the movie retellings. Look, there were some things about the Battle of Gods and Resurrection F arcs that I think did add to the story that the movies couldn't add. But for the most part, I felt they were completely pointless and I felt like they could have started Dragon Ball Super right from the Universe 6 arc or they could have done a short sort of recap episode or they could have just cut the movies up into three or four episodes and just shown those and then gone right into Universe 6. Outside of the few fun moments that we got from those early episodes the first 27 episodes of Dragon Ball Super can be skipped you can watch the two movies and go right into episode 28 and not miss a thing so to me that is something that Dragon Ball Super I felt was pointless and even though we heard that it was a Toriyama idea maybe because he was lazy or because he needed more time to write the universe 6 arc we may never know the answer to that I thought that it actually hurt Dragon Ball Super and gave it kind of a bad reputation early on. Now the next one on the list I feel is an overarching problem in the series and that is Dragon Ball Super I think has to explain things a bit better. Now I'm not asking for minute details to be explained. For example, I don't care about the gravity level on Zuno's planet or how tall Monaka is or what his favorite food is. Who cares about that stuff? But there are so many instances in this series. In fact, there are too many for me to even list here because it would be like another 20 minute video that Dragon Ball Super just doesn't explain anything. Or there are questions that you have within a certain arc that never get answered. A quick example is during the Trunks arc, we know that in the future timeline, we know Zamasu was able to take Take out all of the gods by killing all the Supreme Kais in the different universes. What they don't explain is where was the Grand Priest at? The Grand Priest is a major figure in Dragon Ball Super, not just in that arc, but also in the Tournament of Power arc, and yet they don't even explain where he's at or what's happening. And in that same arc, you have Trunks in what was an admittedly very badass moment when he first powered up into Super Saiyan Rage, but the series failed to explain how he got that power, where it came from, does it have God Key? There wasn't even an attempt to explain that and don't even let me get into the whole time travel stuff so the trunks arc I think as much as people loved it when it was going on including myself when you look back at it with a microscope there are a lot of storytelling flaws in that arc and there's just so many things that Dragon Ball Super has failed to explain and I will give them 
time to explain it in the future, but I feel like at this point, based on the way the writing's been, I don't know if we're ever going to get explanations to some of these things. Maybe in a guidebook in 10 years. Maybe Toriyama will answer it in an interview. That's not good enough. The series itself should explain certain things. One example that ties into the previous bullet point about the movie retellings is that Dragon Ball Super sometimes has trouble not understanding where to take its audience. What I mean by that is, we know that Pilaf wished himself to be a kid. That's explained in the Battle of God's movie but they don't explain it in the battle of gods tv series we're just supposed to know well what's the point of watching the movie retellings if you're not going to give us a more thorough explanation or expansion of what actually happened to pilaf these should be two independent properties you should have the manga you should have the anime and you should have the original movies that the anime adapted you shouldn't have to read or watch everything to get the general idea of the story. You should be able to watch Dragon Ball Super start to finish. And if you're watching Dragon Ball Super and you've never seen Battle of Gods the movie, you're going to have questions about things like that. And that's something that there really is no excuse and I think it should be fixed. Now the next bullet point that I want to get to is the power scaling. This has been a big complaint in the fandom and I want to address it. Now, the power scaling in Dragon Ball has always been one where Toriyama just sort of writes things and comes up with things for convenient purposes. You know, you had power levels early in Dragon Ball Z, then he introduced things like the Zenkai boost to get characters stronger, he introduced the Room of Spirit and Time so that characters can actually get stronger within days, even though it's years inside of the room, and little ideas that I thought were pretty smart. I mean, these are great ideas to sort of cheat. It's a good writing tool but in Dragon Ball Super sometimes things come off a little bit well strange and I don't think the problem is so much the power scaling it's more so about how the writing addresses these power scaling problems and how characters seem to become a lot stronger than they should without enough of a logical explanation the big one to me in my opinion was Piccolo in the Universe 6 arc and the really big one was Android 17 in the Tournament of Power it doesn't make sense to me that Android 17 and we know that the dude is a very strong guy we know the androids are strong Okay, I'm very familiar with how Dragon Ball works, but for me to believe that this guy has been working on an island all these years and is somehow able to go one-on-one -on -one with Super Saiyan Blue Goku, that's ridiculous. I mean, look at the difference between Super Saiyan Blue Goku and the Majin Buu era characters, much less the ones in the Android Saga. This dude couldn't even be a powered up first form cell. How in the hell are we supposed to believe that Seventeen can compete with a literal beyond God character? All all it would take is a little bit of creativity so that people sort of can understand how he got so strong but the series didn't even bother to even do that which again that ties into the whole explaining things better idea like I said with these seven bullet points they all sort of tie in together in a weird way but to me that in itself needs to be addressed now at this point in my video I was going to go off on a side tangent about the universe six Saiyans but I'll probably address that in a separate video I want to go ahead and move on to the next bullet point because I figure you guys already get where I'm going with that right the next bullet point is I want character centric episodes not everything has to be about Goku I find it funny that people would make fun of Dragon Ball GT and call it Goku time when Dragon Ball Super is not that different maybe not as much as GT but there is a huge focus on Goku now look I understand Toriyama and Dragon Ball better than most and Goku is the main character of Dragon Ball and the story has to be primarily about his journey through life but not every single episode has to focus on Goku there should be character centric episodes like Hit should have an episode just about him and maybe Kaba and some of the other characters that Dragon Ball is obviously trying to get over they want these characters to get popular so they can make more stuff with them in the future and sell more toys and video games and whatnot. I feel like there should be episodes where they just focus on some of the other characters. Like, for example, in Dragon Ball Z, the episode where Gohan goes to the village and meets the girl named Lime. Yes, that episode was not the best episode, but it was good that they focused on Gohan for once. Or in Dragon Ball Z, early on, that episode where Vegeta and Nappa go and fight the Arleans on planet Arlia and they destroy the planet. 
that episode, just that Vegeta and Nappa adventure showing off their power, I want more of that kind of stuff in Dragon Ball Super. It wasn't about Goku, but it served a purpose. And I think that I want more character-centric episodes, especially since modern television writing, some of the biggest shows nowadays do do that. They take time to develop characters, and I think that these characters have so much potential that they need a little bit more time to themselves. Plus, it gives Nozawa a little bit of a break to rest her voice and it gives the writers some breathing room and some ideas to be more creative with how they structure these characters. That is, of course, just my opinion. The next one I want to talk about is the arcs need development in Dragon Ball Super, and I want there to be a little bit less focus on just nostalgia. A big thing with Dragon Ball Super is they're playing up the nostalgia of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z a lot. We've seen Trunks come back. We've seen Frieza come back. We've seen a female Broly. The fan service is there. Now, I want you to understand, fan service is not necessarily a bad thing. It's not a bad strategy to use use fan service to hook the older fans from the past and that's fine too even though this show is targeted at Japanese kids or Japanese teens obviously it's internationally successful and a lot of people who are in their 30s and 40s love this show because they were teenagers and adults when it aired in Toonami or even when it aired in Japan so I understand all that but I feel like the arcs in Dragon Ball Super, as far as it actually being a storyline, have been, well, a little bit subpar compared to Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Go back and watch the Piccolo Saga in Dragon Ball, or watch the Namek or the Android Saga. Yes, those are not perfect story arcs, but the story arcs actually had a story that flowed and had twists and turns. You know, you start the Android arc with Frieza coming back. Trunks appears, kills them, tells them about a future threat. They go fight the threat. Goku has the heart attack. We find out there are more androids. Then we find out about Cell. So it's like you've got all these sort of unveilings and all these little surprises that if you're watching it for the first time, you would have no idea about. I think the Trunks arc was doing this for a little while effectively, but I feel at one point, which I'll discuss in probably a separate video, it did kind of fall off a cliff and just became kind of dragged out. But it did a great job of keeping that mystery going for a long time, and I need more of that. We need more actual storytelling. The problem with Super is that all the arcs are very simplified. We've had two tournaments, two movie retellings, one of which had pretty much no story in Resurrection F, and we have the Trunks arc, which I think fell off a cliff at the end. To me, I feel like I want an arc that feels like a classic Dragon Ball arc where it's an actual flowing story. Am I making sense to you? And I think one of the problems with this is because there are so many different writers that are tasked to writing Dragon Ball Super and there is no original manga. You know, obviously, the Toriyama of the 80s and 90s is not the same Toriyama that is writing Dragon Ball Super. And what I mean by that is not that it's a different person altogether, but that this Toriyama now has much less involvement in the story. There is no original manga. He doesn't have the old editors that he had helping him out back in the day. And he's also much older and has different different priorities in life than he did back then. Back then, Toriyama was a workaholic. This Toriyama isn't necessarily as invested as he was back then, presumably based on interviews. So you have to understand that Super's written completely different from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z because there is no source material. And I feel like because of that, they're going to need some more direction, which I'm going to get to in a future bullet point. Okay, so hold off on that one. But basically, I want like an epic arc that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and they're all satisfying. And when you get done watching the arc, you feel like the time you invested was worth it. So there you go. Number six out of seven, and one that I think is very important is we need more steaks. And no, I'm not talking about like medium rare filet mignon. I'm talking about like we need the series to actually give us steaks. Because this series takes place during the 10 year time skip, there is no actual stakes because we know that Universe 7 is going to be okay. We know what the outcome is going to be and the Dragon Balls being used so frequently throughout Dragon Ball Z has kind of made it to where we know that at the end of the day everybody gets wished back. We know that there's going to be a happy ending and that's okay to have a happy ending but I feel like at this point in the series where we are with the Tournament of Power I think that this series has been stuck in this 10 year time skip for far too long and there are tons of problems with them being stuck in this not just with plot holes and things that are really the opposite of what the original narrative of the manga told us, but just the fact that I feel like if we move past 
the 10 year time skip and actually focus on the next generation of characters. Keep Goku in there. I'm not saying to get rid of him, but actually retire guys like Roshi, Tien, Krillin, and even Piccolo, sorry Quinn, and move forward from this and continue the story. I think that more Dragon Ball fans will be more invested in seeing where it's going to go. You know, and yes, I am saying straight up to ignore Dragon Ball GT. Sorry if you're a Dragon Ball GT fan, but at this point, the best thing for them to do is to write an original story after the end of Z that's totally different and hopefully a little bit better. So the last reason, the last idea, the last improvement I want to see in Dragon Ball Super, which to me is the big overarching problem, is that the series needs direction beyond just Toriyama. Dragon Ball Super needs to hire a proper showrunner. Now yes, Dragon Ball Super already has a series planner and a series director. That's not what I mean necessarily by showrunner. What I mean by showrunner is somebody other than Toriyama who's going to be there every single week, every single time they have to produce an episode, who's going to have the clout to actually talk to Toriyama and veto Toriyama's ideas, kind of like his editors used to do back in the day during Shonen Jump. Someone who has direction and has a forward-thinking mentality so they can think about the future of where Dragon Ball Super should be. There are so many different cooks in the kitchen, so many different writers working on this and different directions they want the series to go that it doesn't feel like it's a cohesive storyline. It doesn't feel like the characters are on the same page from episode to episode. You know, you have situations where characters will act one way one episode, then the next day is totally dropped and ignored. And to me, that's a bad thing. Doesn't happen too much, but it does happen. And I feel like even though Toriyama is the creator, and there's no disrespect to him, having a newer, kind of younger mind involved in Dragon Ball who can think outside the box and is not afraid to tell Toriyama, with all due respect, Toriyama-sensei, that's not a very good idea or that creates a plot hole. I think you need somebody in there who has the balls to actually tell Toriyama and or Toei or whomever's really in charge that this idea is bad or this idea is good or let's tweak this and let's tweak that. I think you need somebody like that in there and I think that Dragon Ball Super's produced a little bit too, I guess, haphazardly. I think it needs to be a bit more organized because even though this is, once again, a show for kids pretty much, it still doesn't mean that the show has to be dumbed down or it has to be poorly written. You can have great TV shows and movies for kids that are genius. I mean, look at those Pixar movies. You can't tell me that Toy Story 1, 2, and 3 aren't classics. Why can't Dragon Ball Super tell an emotional story like that? Well, it can. We've seen them do it. I just want them to do it a little bit more. So... Those are my seven ideas for improving Super, and again, it's just my dumb list. If you disagree with me, that's okay too. If you agree, that's also cool. I know a lot of you will agree with at least some of these, because I've seen the complaints and I kind of agree with it. So, of course, in the comments, give me your ideas of improving the series. Try to keep it more critical, though. I don't want to hear that you want, you know, uh, Vegeta to, to kill a main villain. Like, everybody wants that, right? We know this already. Give me an idea that would actually help make the story more satisfying for you. You know, uh, let me know. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And remember, I actually do enjoy watching Super. It's 30 minutes where I can turn my brain off and be a kid again every single week. But if I'm looking for more sophisticated writing, I'll probably go elsewhere. But I do feel like Super can get a little bit better if they do things like this. Only my opinion. Thank you. Hope you have a great day. I love you all. I'll catch you down the road.